Hey guys, it's Chris here with another Objective-C lesson and in this video I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to be zooming into the text for those of you guys who gave me the feedback that the text is hard to read. Uh, so let me know what you think about it and if I should continue to do it. Today we're going to be talking about properties. So I've got a starter project here. It's just a new Xcode project. You can download it in the description below or the link on the screen. And all I've done is just create a new NS object class called car. Um, so let's dive in. How, you know, what is a property? First of all, uh, essentially a property is an instance variable, which we've talked about where you access and you set through getter and setter methods. So let me show you an example. For instance, in my car class, if I wanted to declare uh, a name property so that we could keep track of the name for the car, all I would do in my header file is use the keyword property, and then in brackets, I would put some attributes. And let me show you how it works before I go back and explain what these attributes mean. Okay, so you've got your property keyword, you've got your attributes. Next comes the data type. Basically, what is this property? What type of data is this property going to store? So it could be another class type. It could be, you know, an integer. Or in this case, I'm going to put, I'm going to store a string for the class name. And literally, that's all you need to type. So, for example, in view controller dot m if I wanted to use my new property let's import the car header file and then let's declare a new uh, instance of a car we'll call it my car and if I wanted to set the name for my car all I would have to do using dot notation is do something like this and if I wanted to retrieve that value I would literally just do this so my instance dot property name now let's go back to car.h and let me explain what these attributes are. So the first one, non-atomic, it basically means that this property is not thread safe. So if you're writing an application with multiple threads, uh, you could get different sorts of race conditions if both threads are trying to set the, uh, set the same property and you'll get all sorts of funky behavior. Now you could set this to atomic and what happens is that code gets automatically added to your property to prevent that from happening but that locking code adds extra overhead so if you don't even know uh, what I'm talking about this multi-threaded stuff then you're probably going to just be setting it to non-atomic because chances are you're, you'll be writing a single threaded application. Now the second property, second attribute, sorry, strong is basically if you remember in our previous video where we were talking about memory, we were talking about how automatic reference counting basically determines if you have an instance of an object and there are no references holding a, a reference to it, it's going to get deallocated and your memory is automatically going to get cleaned up. If we use the attribute strong for our property and let's say that this property um, stores in instance of another car object so by having the strong attribute specified if my property held a reference to another object it would count as a strong reference now let me contrast that with a weak reference if there is nothing else referencing that object aside for my property that object would still get cleaned up and that memory get deallocated because I have weak if this were strong on the other hand even if there were no other references referring to the object aside from my property that would count as a plus one for the internal reference count for that object now what happens if I have weak and I'm holding a reference to, a reference to another car object and then that car object gets cleaned up? In that case, my property would automatically be set to nil. 
So if your property uses weak referencing, then you have to make sure that you check for nil before you start using whatever object is assigned to your property. So in this video, you saw how easy it was to uh, create properties and to use them. Now, the example that we used was we created a name property in our car class. Now, what if you wanted something to happen when the name property got set? For example, to call another method or to set another property in your car object. Well, in the next video, we're going to continue talking about properties and I'll show you how to do exactly that. So instead of the usual fact of the day, I want to instead ask you guys a question. So right now I've got a video series on Objective-C and another one on learning Xcode. And I want to release videos a little more frequently so we can finish those series and then get to actually building some apps together. Now the question I want to ask you guys is, you know, what sort of uh, features or functionality or apps would you like to learn about? Uh, so this gives me an idea of what sort of content and videos uh, that you guys want to see so I can release videos that you guys want to see. <laughs> okay, so let me know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up this video, alright? Thanks, I'll see you guys later.